Hey guys, David here, how are you? Welcome to another episode of Disney for Brits. Now, as somebody that's been to Disney for a long time, my first time was 1984. I forget about how magical and special it is. So on this episode of Disney for Brits, we're gonna be talking about the 10 things that surprised newcomers the first time they visit Walt Disney World. So coming in at number one is the whole feeling of Walt Disney World. There's a sense, a group shared sense of euphoria. There's happiness everywhere. The whole experience was lovely. People are smiling and you're in an incredibly safe environment. And this really surprises people the first time they go because they're expecting to be around lots and lots of people and that often causes problems. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes there are people that are a little bit grumpy when you're rushing to get somewhere, when the kids are a little bit fraught, but overall, it's a really lovely atmosphere, and the atmosphere does differ from park to park to park. Magic Kingdom, there will be lots of young children, there'll be lots of parents with them, hopefully, helping them get to all the rides they want. Epcot being that much wider and spread out has a much calmer vibe about it. Animal Kingdom is a little bit more compact, but again, a real mix for adults and children. And then Hollywood Studios, very spread out, lots and lots of things going on, more thrill rides, so a really interesting place to go. But overall, the whole feeling is one of organization, happiness, and a general sense of euphoria. And if you hang on till number 10, I'll tell you when the euphoria is the biggest and when people are most happy. Number two that surprises a lot of people is that Walt Disney World and Disney as a whole is not just for kids. Now, as somebody who's been there both with children and as an adult, there are two different experiences. But if you look around the queues going into the parks, you're probably going to equally see the similar amount of family groups as adult groups. And the reason for this is everybody can enjoy it. It's not just made for kids. The rides are for all ages. The whole feeling of euphoria, which we talked on in number one, just carries you everywhere. And certainly when you get to some of the bigger rides like Everest and Space Mountain and Splash Mountain, they are for kids. The youngest ones might not do it, but adults are gonna love it. And if you want an opportunity to be the biggest child that you can be, this is the place to go. So don't stress about going to Walt Disney World without kids. Number three that surprises people is the size. And by this I'm talking about the size of Walt Disney World and the parks. Walt Disney World itself is 43 square miles. Just think about that, 43 square miles. Now this isn't all parks, there's lots and lots of roads going between them, but there are a number of parks in there. The parks themselves are big. You will walk a lot. An average walk for us when we're there is between eight and 10 miles a day. Now we do full on parking, if that's a phrase. So make sure you take really comfortable shoes and various uh, changes of shoes so you can do different ones every day, but they are huge. So when you're going from the UK, give yourself two or three visits per, per park. You're gonna have a 14 day pass probably for a 14 day holiday. So split it up and maybe do half days. Big parks, lots of walking, a massive environment, really surprises people. Number four is actually a nice lead on from number three, the size of it. And it's the fact that there are actually six parks. A lot of people just think Walt Disney World is the Magic Kingdom. And when they think of Disney in Florida, Disney World, they think of the Magic Kingdom. In fact, you've got four parks and two water parks. So the four parks are the Magic Kingdom, where you'll have the various lands. And this is from the original idea of Disneyland in California. The next park to open is Epcot, and this was all about future and world. So you have Future World, which is being massively redeveloped, and World Showcase, where in the space of a mile, another long walk, and eight to 12 countries, you get to visit each of the countries, see their architecture, see their people. The staff there come from the host nation, so when you're in Great Britain, the staff there are from Great Britain. When you're in Norway, the staff there are from Norway. 
You've then got Animal Kingdom, which is amazing for those of you that love to see animals. It's got some great rides. It's got Pandora, which if you've ever seen Avatar, is definitely a place to go and visit. Get there early if you want to get some of the great rides there. And then finally, you've got Hollywood Studios. Now this has got Star Wars Land uh, and various Star Wars rides, but also lots of theater rides. And it's also got the Tower of Terror, which you have to do. Finally, the last two are two water parks. You have Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon. Blizzard Beach is a really unusual backstory. It's where Florida unexpectedly froze and there was snow and when the snow melted, great rides appeared. And then Typhoon Lagoon is an old fashioned water park as such. The biggest splash wave pool in the world was at the time it was open. So two great places, again, get there early, get the rides that you wanna do done first and then just relax in the sun. There's plenty of sun beds, plenty of sand, but not just one park in Walt Disney World, Florida, six parks. Number five is something that really surprises people. Now, there have been tests done on this where people have put some rubbish down on the floor to see how long it takes to be picked up. Walt Disney World resorts, parks and attractions are incredibly clean. I think the test for the rubbish, it's about 45 seconds. Whether that's true or not now, I don't know, but it is incredibly clean. Everybody will pick up rubbish as they see it, whether they're senior executives or custodians, which is what they call their cleaning staff. The toilets will be the cleanest toilets, public toilets you've ever been in. And the place is just clean. It's lovely to be there. There's no mess anywhere. They're even watching to see what you do. My partner and I bought ourselves a couple of Starbucks and decided to go on a ride. So we cheekily put the Starbucks behind some bushes thinking we could get them when we came out. Somebody spotted this and they were gone when we came out. So people are clearing up all the time. And that's great because what you find is people then do that themselves. There's plenty of bins. People don't throw rubbish on the floor. They don't put cigarette butts on the floor. It all goes into the bin. So Walt Disney World resorts, parks, hotels, incredibly clean. Number six is the theming. Now, if you've been to other parks in Orlando, you'll see a little bit of theming, but Walt Disney World used what they call immersive theming. And this is, you are right in the middle of it. So when you go into New Fantasyland, for instance, and you're walking around, the place is themed like the castle from Beauty and the Beast, the Little Mermaid ride, the whole area is themed. Staff costumes change. Uh, an example of intense theming, is when you go to Star Wars Land in Hollywood Studios. The cast members all wear Star Wars uniforms or Star Wars type uniforms. They get to choose their uniform. This is one of the first lands where the cast members are allowed to create a character for themselves so they can decide who they are and what they are. You'll hear them saying bright suns in the morning. I can't remember what they say in the evening. If you've heard that, type in the letters below, in the comments below. But immersive theming everywhere, even in the hotels, the hotel rooms. They're dialing that down a bit now as they go for a more clean, modern look. But you'll still see lots of theming. The poly, which they're redoing, for instance, there's Moana regalia, pictures, signs. So you'll find theming everywhere. Number seven. We've talked about the friendliness and the happiness of the people that visit. Number seven, and here's a real difference from the other resorts that we visited, is the staff. The staff appear, or are, genuinely happy to be at work, genuinely happy to help, and seem to love what they're doing. Now, as with lots and lots of parks and great numbers of people, there's always war stories about how people didn't like this or didn't like that. I've never seen a cast member be anything other than polite and helpful. If you've got a problem, go to them. They will sort it for you as best they can. They're always cheerful. And even when people cross the line a little bit, even when people cross the line over the parade ropes, they're very polite in helping people going back. So staff members really, really make a big difference and you'll find them happy and cheerful and ready to help. 
Number eight is a slightly historical one, and we're going back six or seven years in how little variety there was in the food back then. My partner's vegetarian and gluten intolerant, which on their own are challenges, put them together, it's a real challenge. And when we first started going six, seven, eight years ago, vegetarian food and vegan food was really, really hard to find in Walt Disney World. Speed forward to 2021 and even 2020, um, there's a great variety of vegan food. Some of their best restaurants, the California Grill on top of the massive contemporary resort, has a superb vegetarian or vegan platter where you pick four dishes. It's more food than anybody can normally handle. Similarly for gluten-free, if you ask for gluten-free bread, it's always there. So historically, it was a challenge. Now there's loads of it. So if you have any kind of eating challenges, gluten-free, vegetarian, vegan, don't worry about it. Tell the staff and they will sort it out for you. Number nine is also about food and it's how they will cater en masse at Walt Disney World. If you've ever been to the quick service restaurants and at the back there's the window where the people are cooking, you may be surprised to see that they are cooking in massive quantities. There are huge bowls of chips, there are huge bowls of sausages and burgers and it's being made on a massive production line. But then you'd expect that because they are seeing tens of thousands of customers a day. It's not always like that when you go to some of the smaller restaurants and when you go into the resorts, uh, your food is made to order and you can get an amazing freshly made salad or freshly made pasta dish. And at the other end of the scale, when you go to the table service restaurants or the signature restaurants, which are the really expensive ones, such as the California Grill or Victorian Alberts or places at the top end and you're talking a hundred pounds for a meal. That food, I guarantee, is not fast food built and created in bulk. It's made for you by a proper chef, perfectly made, perfectly presented, and will be amazing. So the great thing about all of this is, there's a whole range of food to eat, and you can go from the high volume fast food to the really high end food and get everything you need at Walt Disney World. Number 10, and here's my favorite one, and the thing that surprises people the most. The fireworks at the end of the night, whether you're in the Magic Kingdom, whether you're in Epcot or any other places, will astound you. It will amaze your senses, your eyes and your ears, and it will absolutely amaze your heart. The sense of euphoria when these fireworks are going on, the projections which are mind-blowing themselves. You wonder how they've done it. The castle turns into a spaceship. It turns into all of the castles for the various films, such as Tangled, Beauty and the Beast. You'll see Maleficent there. The whole things that are going on will absolutely overawe your senses. And when you add to that the fact that the sound is amazing, the bass will be booming, the floor will be shaking, and the final bit is Disney's ability to actually create emotion, to play with your emotions and take you from happy to scared to sad to absolutely delighted with what you see. It's a real surprise for first timers. Don't be surprised if people are around you are gently dabbing tears or sobbing a little bit. It gets all of us that first time and the second time and the third time. I guarantee if you see the fireworks at the end of the day, you're going to be similar to me where however many times you go, it's going to get you right here and there'll be a little tear to wipe away because they just play with you and it's a beautiful sight, an amazing end to the day. So there you have it, 10 things that surprise first timers. If you know of anything else, tell me that there's something that you've noticed as a first timer where you've said, actually, David, you've missed this. Put it in the comments below. I'd be delighted to hear. Similarly, please do like and subscribe. There'll be something coming up on the bottom of the screen here. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to click the bell and you'll get notified when a new video appears. The final bit for you is to say is to remind you that I've got two travel channels as well. If you're an absolute Disney fan, check out D4B Travel on Facebook. 
or if you're not a Disney fan, and there are people out there, so check out Ollie's Travels, which is run by my little cockapoo Ollie, where we focus on non-Disney holidays. It's a great place to go. Find those on Facebook, like them, follow them, whatever you want to do there, and you'll get notified of great deals. Finally, if you want to see anything else that we're doing on Disney for Brits, go to DisneyForBrits.com. That's Disney, the number four, Brits.com. And you'll be updated with everything that we're doing on the various channels. I hope that's been useful. It's been great to talk to you again. And as our pal Mickey says, I'll see you real soon.